Miami Vice, the Florida Burn, part four from where we left off. 12 paces to the men's room door, tubs stalled, while two spacey bits of fluff reeled arm in arm in his direction. Oh, a little chocolate bunny, said one with the bleached out punk dew. Come on with us, darling, you're cute. What about Ramon, said her partner, whose eyes were invisible behind crusting layers of Cleopatra makeup. To hell with Ramon, said the first, gobbling Tubbs up with her eyes. From behind Tubbs, a voice said, Both of you flake away right now. He was too close to Tubbs to be an errant pedestrian. Tubbs speed drew his pistol and dodged low while a heavy haymaker blow sliced the air where his head had been. He brought the 357 up and down with a knife-like action and smashed the interloper's nose into a cartilaginous pulp. Blood spurted floorward from both nostrils, making a letter A on his face with the mouth as the crossbar. His eyes had one second to register before they rolled up into dreamland. As Tubbs had anticipated, this was one of Calderon's goons. What he hadn't anticipated was the second one crashing through the doorway and charging him like a fullback. The two punk flappers screamed. He plowed into Tubbs head first. Tubbs landed on his can and skidded backwards, the air woofing out of him. He had dropped the pistol. The goon was still clawing his own gun out. More screams. Tubbs levered up from the floor and kicked the bodyguard hard in the wrist, whipping him around and sending the gun cartwheeling away. A freight train fist aimed for his face and he bobbed around it. The goon lumbered past. Tubbs planted two sharp jabs into his kidneys. The goon grunted and turned for another charge. Calderon was looking at the fight from the men's room door. Tubbs realized that time was up. He flat-handed the goon's face in the face, jumped and locked his forearms around his head, bent him over and kicked the wind out of him until he coughed blood. Growing up on the streets of New York and taught Tubbs all sorts of cute combat tricks, he dropped the goon atop the inert form of his partner. Calderon had already shagged tail out of the fire exit. The door hissed shut on its hydraulic closure and Tubbs smashed into the bar before it was fully shut. The door flew back and banged metallically against the outside wall. No sign of Calderon. He'd forgotten his gun. Damn, he spun around. No sign of life at all. Calderon had blended into the scenery with the speed of a cockroach. Stupid, foolhardy to chase a man who was probably packed, thought Tubbs, when he'd lost his own gun. He did it anyway. He ran down the alley, leather shoes kicking up puddles of slush. At a noise to his left, he froze, fully, fully expecting a bullet in the spleen. A scrawny, rib-protruding alley dog ravaged the spillings from an overturned garbage can. The dog glanced up at Tubbs, snarled, and returned to his late dinner. Tubbs' shoulders drooped. His ragged breath made wispy contrails in the chill air. His stomach throbbed from the dent Calderon's hound dog had put in his midsection. Calderon was nowhere to be seen. He had escaped again like a wraith. And we will leave it there because that's the end of the chapter. Thanks for watching.